Hurricane Dorian is sweeping up the United States' eastern seaboard tonight after adding its list of victims. The storm is now blamed for at least six deaths in the U.S. and 30 in the Bahamas. And it doled out surprising damage today along North Carolina's Outer Banks. John Yang is in Nassau, where he watched the hurricane's progress. Dorian roared ashore at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina this morning, its first landfall in the United States after devastating the Bahamas. Sustained winds had dropped to 90 miles an hour, just half what they had once been, but Governor Roy Cooper warned those in the storm's path to remain on high alert. The danger right now is the rising storm surge of four to seven feet and flash floods as the hurricane churns along the coast. One area of greatest concern, Ocracoke Island, about 40 miles southwest of Cape Hatteras. The low-lying 16-mile-long barrier island was quickly inundated. Rising water trapped hundreds of people who chose not to evacuate. Communications experts, law enforcement, and a medical strike team have been transported there, and a search and rescue team is on the way. We estimate about 800 people remained on the island during the storm and have heard reports from residents who say the flooding there was catastrophic. More than 330,000 homes and businesses across the Carolinas and southeastern Virginia lost power. Virginia Beach saw strong winds and crashing waves along the shoreline. Heavy rain triggered flash flooding. Farther south, cleanup efforts were underway in Charleston, South Carolina. Residents took down plywood from store windows as crews cleared away down branches under sunny skies. But in the battered northern Bahamas, massive piles of debris as far as the eye can see. Hundreds of people on Abaco Island gathered today at the damaged airport, desperately hoping to escape to Nassau. We have no power, no water, and it's bad. Everything we have Everything is damaged. It's chaos here, and the place is uninhabitable. Yeah. Nobody can live here. So we're trying to get out, and they only have limited um, ways of getting out here. Small planes were able to evacuate some, including the elderly and the sick, a few at a time. For those unable to leave, aid groups were starting to arrive to assess how to meet their needs. Tom Cotter is director of emergency response and preparedness for the global relief organization Project Hope. This is the real deal. Uh, there is no searching for the disaster. The disaster is very apparent. Every street is affected. Every person is affected. This is an incredibly dire and severe situation. Cotter described the extreme challenges he and his team encountered. It's really hard to get to an island, and it's really hard to get to an island with, a, with an airstrip that has been heavily damaged and is, is limited in what kind of planes it can get. All we want to do is get supplies and responders on the island, and we have to do it a small bit at a time instead of the large quantities that we would see if, if it was easier to get in. And it's all because of the storm that the access is limited. The U.S. Coast Guard has also been helping. Guardsmen returning from a mission today spoke of traumatic cases. Injuries to the head by flying debris. People were crushed by cars, by buildings, uh, multiple fractures to legs, any, any limbs, anything. It just, it was bad. And for all of the survivors, the emotional toll looms large. Tom Cotter of Project Hope. The mental trauma of this, it's as severe and it's as important to address as the physical trauma that people might have experienced. Everybody knows somebody who's been really affected by this storm. And again, with communications down, a lot of people don't know if their loved ones are alive or not alive. And for some, Dorian is still a threat in the making. Warnings and watches have now been posted from Delaware to Nova Scotia, Canada, as the hurricane drives northeast. Here on the edge of the NASA airport, these two big air-conditioned tents being set up as a transition center for evacuees from Grand Bahama Island and Abaco. This is not a government operation. This is being done by private citizens, local charities, local civic groups, and NGOs. Inside are clean clothes if people need them, food and water if they need them, baby supplies if they need them, cushions to lie on, all the things in short that the people we talked to earlier today outside the government evacuation center in Nassau say they wish they had there. Most importantly, according to the people we talked to outside the government center, inside are people to help them find places to live 
in case they don't have friends or families here in Nassau. They're reaching out to real estate agents who rent out vacation homes here, to hotels who have empty rooms, to anyone who might have a space to offer. So, John, what, what about those people you spoke with who had been in the government shelter? What did they say it's like there? How, how is it? It's a big uh, sports arena. We weren't allowed to go in, but we talked to people as they came out. It's a big sports arena. They say people are just lying on the floor of the arena. Uh, we spoke to one woman, uh, uh, Davinia Bethel, who's a business consultant who lost her home on Abaco. She was actually dis uh, able to spend one night in Nassau with some friends, but they could only host her for that one night. So she went to the shelter to look for help. There was no help to be found, she said. They said that uh, the social services uh, people from the government told her she had to go to an office some distance away to try to find housing. So there's a lot of frustration over there about the lack of assistance. And, John, you've also, uh, we know you've been talking to people who've been literally trying to get on private charter planes to get to, to one of the other islands where their, their family members, loved ones are. That's right. Again, private uh, efforts where the uh, the government seems to be a little slow. Most of the peop these people, especially here, who are being evacuated from Abaco, especially, are just people who fly pri uh, get flown in, uh, flown off the island rather on private planes, eight seat planes, eighteen seat planes. These are planes that are either chartered uh, by people at about a cost of about twenty four hundred dollars round trip or uh, private plane pilots themselves fly over land and just say, Cut, get on board, I'll take you to Nassau. I asked Divinia, that's how Divinia Bethel got out. I asked you, did you know the man? Did you know anybody uh, on that plane? She said no, but it was a plane, uh, a seat on a plane off of Abaco, and so she took it. And John, maybe in connection with that, you told us earlier today, you've, you've really been struck by the closeness of this community in the Bahamas. It is. It's amazing. You walk around and everybody uh, knows somebody, has family, has some connection, has friends on either Grand Bahama or Abaco. You know, I've been saying in my reports that Nassau has been relatively unaffected, and that's largely true. The damage here is very little. There's some flooding. And just quickly, John, I heard uh, some of that we heard, the challenges that Tom Cotter, a project Hope is facing. We know there's some video of, of that shows the sheer devastation uh, people are dealing with. It is. I mean, it, it's amazing to look at those pictures. I, I've covered mostly tornadoes. This I haven't covered a lot of hurricanes. And I'm used to seeing the pictures that we're seeing from Abaco at tornadoes. Houses splintered, just flattened, uh, big pieces of equipment. In this case, uh, big yachts, big boats picked up and moved, uh, resting against buildings. But in tornadoes, it's a relatively narrow area. It's the path of the tornado, which can uh, be pick and choose. On You can have a house de uh, devastated on one side of the street and left standing untouched on the other side. But these pictures from Abaco, it is huge area, fields just leveled. And I, you know, as Tom Cotter said in the uh, tape piece, he's seen a lot of disasters in his work. But this, he said he's seen nothing like this. John Yang reporting for us from Nassau in the Bahamas. John, thank you so much.